Viral infections are linked to inflammatory diseases and autoimmunity. Yep, the Epstein-Barr virus affects more than 90% of people in the United States by the age of 20. At least one in four of those infected will develop the commonly known disease mononucleosis, or mono for short. Experiencing a rash, enlarged liver or spleen, head, body aches, and extreme fatigue. But what you may have not known is that the Epstein-Barr virus is not only related to mono, it is in the same family of viruses as herpes, chickenpox, and shingles. Recent studies indicate it may be a catalyst for at least six more diseases, most of which are autoimmune in nature. These include multiple sclerosis, inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, celiac disease, type 1 diabetes, I lost count, and idiopathic juvenile arthritis. Six, yeah. But here's a little bit more scary news for you. Epstein-Barr virus isn't the only virus associated with autoimmunity. Cytomegalovirus, CMV, has been linked to Sjogren's syndrome, upper respiratory viral infections, and human herpes. Virus 6 has been linked to multiple sclerosis, and Epstein-Barr virus has previously been linked to lupus. Ah, so what now? Well, that sucks. So does that mean that if you've been exposed to any of those, or if you've had any of those, you're doomed? No. Chronic viral infections can contribute to chronic inflammatory diseases. It's been long been thought that viruses play a part, just a part, in the development of chronic inflammatory diseases, especially autoimmunity. Check out our page on autoimmunity if you haven't already. There's a link down below. So many healthcare practitioners report that there is frequently a hidden infection that either precedes or seems to trigger an initial autoimmune attack or subsequently appears when the immune system is weakened once autoimmunity is activated. So what came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know, but really, it doesn't matter because it's there anyway. So this creates a vicious cycle of infection and illness. Infections are opportunistic and often travel together. Many autoimmune patients find that they host multiple infections that are either bacterial, viral, parasitic, and or fungal driving the inflammation that leads to all these symptoms and autoimmunity. So thus, the need for testing. You've got to find out which ones you may be dealing with. Check out our functional medicine testing page. There's lots of them. So the relationship between viral infection and autoimmune disease is multifaceted, involving numerous complex processes in the body, more than what we have time to talk about today. Scientists believe that a variety of factors usually must be present for an infection to result in an autoimmune condition. I tend to agree. This includes not only a genetic predisposition, but also a lifestyle and environmental factors, such as stress, poor diet, poor sleep habits, leaky gut, environmental toxins, dietary inflammatory triggers, and other miscellaneous issues. Toxins, I think, was missing. So it's often said in the functional medicine world, and I realize this may be a terrible saying, but it fits, and I didn't make it up. But genetics loads the gun, and environment pulls the trigger. It is very true. So in a nutshell, chronic disease develops as a result of improper immune response to a viral infection due to other predisposing factors. The virus acts as a straw that breaks the camel's back. In addition, chronic viruses can prevent autoimmune remission. Notice I did not say cure, I said remission. Whole nother side note. Anyway, remission from autoimmune symptoms is, is possible with proper diet and lifestyle management. And again, notice I said remission. However, if you already have an autoimmune condition, a chronic viral infection can prevent you from alleviating your symptoms and halting progression of that autoimmunity. In fact, a chronic virus is a deal breaker in recovery for many patients. So viral infections can develop years before developing autoimmunity. Viral infections usually occur well before any symptoms associated with autoimmunity develop, sometimes years. So it can be difficult to make a definitive link between a particular infection and a yet to be autoimmune disorder. However, if you have not been diagnosed with an autoimmune condition, but still have many of these viruses in the past, 
and have unexplained symptoms now, it's worth getting tested for autoimmunity and a chronic virus. And you probably also want to check out my previous blog on autoimmunity and leaky gut. It's a good one. So like this video, share it, send it to somebody you love, make a comment, dislike it, whatever. Consider subscribing on this side, the little logo down at the bottom there. I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy, be happy.